Right, so one of the ways that you can install uh, EL Donation Tracker if you are on Linux is by using PyPy. Um, that's the Python uh, package repository. And so um, there are ways to install it to your entire system or as a user. I'm not going to cover those because those are a little more quote unquote dangerous because um, you could mess with your system packages. So I'm just going to do a virtual environment install um, and go from there. So first, so I've, I've chosen this um, directory here. Uh, let's create a, a virtual environment. So we're going to do um, Python. Uh, so if you have an older version of Linux, you might need to do Python 3. Um, but on um, on Fedora 31, Python, well, if I type it here, uh, Python is Python 3. So I don't have to do that. So I'll just do Python M V N V and then dot for the directory we're in now. So you might want to create a directory just for this purpose. So you do that. And it just takes a second to copy in the files that needs to copy in. All right, then you need to activate the virtual environment. So we'll do source bin activate. Now you see this E over here and that tells us, and then this is the name of the environment, which just happens to be the folder. So that tells us that we're in the right place to start installing stuff. So now you want to do pip install upgrade pip. That's the first thing you need to do. Okay, now that pip is upgraded, um, and I guess I had it somewhere on my uh, computer before, so I didn't have to go grab it. Um, so now what you want to do is install EL Donation Tracker. So you just do pip install EL uh, Donation Tracker, and there it goes. So it's collecting all of the um, dependencies. Um, and uh, again, it's here, it's saying that it's using cached ones because I've done this on my system before. Um, not in this particular directory, but I guess PyPy is smart enough to know, hey, he's got these somewhere on his system, let's not go grab it again. But so anyway, it grabbed all those things and installs them into this virtual environment. And now we've got EL Donation Tracker. And the way that you start um, the GUI is you do Python M EL Donation Tracker dot GUI and hit enter. And there you go, it starts up. And then you would look here in uh, in your uh, command line for any messages. Like here, it's giving you some messages on where um, it's looking for persistent settings. It's telling you um, that the participant uh, configuration version is correct. And, um, and there's the data that came up because it's not the first time I've ever run this. Uh, and uh, the next section of this video, it's going to go to um, Windows, um, but that's just because the GUI works exactly the same way on Windows and Linux. And so rather than keep on, rather than record the same thing over and over again, I'm just going to cut to that. But everything else should function exactly the same. All right, this portion of the instructions are going to be the same whether you're running Windows or Linux. You may be wondering what just happened. Weren't we just in Windows? Well, for version 4.3, the only thing that has changed for the user is here in the settings. And so rather than record the entire thing all over again, I decided to just um, go over the settings here and insert that into uh, the other videos because everything else stays exactly the same. So um, once you've loaded up the settings, um, I've added a few new buttons, but we'll go through everything from scratch. So uh, what you want to do first is enter your participant ID, and I'll show you exactly where you get that from. If you sign into your Extra Life site, you'll see at the end of the URL, it says participant ID equals and a number 401280. And if you look here, that's exactly what I have, 401280. So you just copy that number over. And one of the new features I've added in 4.3 is the ability to validate your participant ID in case you typed it incorrectly and you want to check. So you just click there and it was able to get to the API point uh, where we're going to grab all the data for you. 
so that means it's a valid ID. It's entirely possible you could have mistyped someone else's ID, <laughs> so if the numbers look weird, check that, but uh, at least it's a valid ID, right? It's not gonna, the program's gonna work. So I like to keep all my, um, my text files that the program produces in my Dropbox folder. That way, if I'm running it on uh, Linux to try and test something, I can uh, do that and still play in um, Windows and still have all the text updating. Um, currency symbol, your pro oh, so if you want to select something different, right, you click that button. Uh, the currency symbol is a dollar sign. You can change that to whatever you want. That'll appear anywhere that the donations appear. Then your team ID, you get similar to the way that you get your um, Extra Life ID. So here's my team. I'm in Giant Bomb. I'm not the leader of the team. Um, I'm in that team. And here it says team ID equals 50394. If you go here, 50394, and you can also validate it once again. And um, this data uh, is filled in because I've already got data. I've run this program before. For you, this will all be blank. Um, but you can see here's the team captain of the team I'm on, the goal, and so on and so forth. Um, and uh, if you look over here, um, there's a lot of data that I show you here. Some of it's warnings and some of it is just for your information. And if you open this program on Windows, you'll see a little command line window that comes along when you open it up. If you're on Linux, you'll either be running this through PyPy or Git clone. And so you'll already be um, in a command line window. So you can just look here for various information that it's telling you. And if anything looks weird, that's kind of your first indication. And if anything goes wrong, this gives you the data you need to file a bug report so that I can try and fix it. Um, and in the future, I plan to use a uh, new Python module that'll kind of allow me to make it red if it's in, if it's a bug and green if it's just information and so on and so forth. Um, all right, so, uh, right, so you can validate that as well and that lets you know that that team exists. So donors to display, um, you'll see this later when I load up either um, OBS or XSplit, depending on which video you're watching. And you'll see that this controls how many donors show up. At the moment, I've only got two donors. So setting this to five is kind of like just saying five is my upper bound, but it doesn't do anything weird. Um, if I set that to one, then it would only show Sean because he was the last person to donate. If you have a lot of donors that donate um, when you're live you might want to make this a higher amount because you'll be able to use this to scroll across the screen um, another uh, set of features here there's a tracker image and a donation sound i'll show you what that's for in a minute um, but uh, the new thing that i've got here is if you need to grab the defaults so you can just grab from github and it'll grab it it'll put it here it'll do put it in the equivalent place in uh, windows and then it'll change this here to link to it i, I was testing it before that's why it already has that uh, location you can also pick any image you want uh what you what you want is a image file like a um oh i've cleared it so you do actually want to not hit cancel but pick an image uh i'll just do this again there we go um so you want an image that has a transparent background and now I'll jump back over to Windows so you can see what that means. This image of me here is an example of a transparent background image. So um, if I were to take this image, I would appear solid and anything I put this on top of um, would just appear right behind me. For example, I use this when I'm making um, YouTube video um, uh, thumbnails and so uh, if I turn this on right here, you can see there's the background right behind me, see? So you want an image that's like that. Okay, and same thing with the sound. You can grab the sound from GitHub, and I'll show you what this does in just a minute. Um, and that's going to go along with these buttons here. So before I get to that, I just want to say whenever you change anything, what you want to do is hit persist settings, especially if you're on Linux. Um, if you hit save, it's most likely not going to work for you if you're doing it through pip. It'll probably work for you if you're doing it within the git clone. 
uh, and if you're on Windows, you definitely want to persist settings because what that allows is that every time there's a new um, release, um, every time there's a new release, it will allow you to carry over your settings. You don't have to redo the settings every time because as soon as you start up, it's going to look for persistent settings. Uh, if you do persist settings, it's going to save it in a special location. Uh, and on Linux, that's in your dot config under your home directory in Windows. There's a similar place. It's basically your roaming profile and it'll go in there. All right. So now let's talk about what all this here is for. Uh, so this is for your tracker. Um, what you want to use this for is in OBS or XSplit, you'll put this as a source right above the video game you're playing, or let's say you're recording yourself cooking or whatever. This will be the topmost video. You'll tell OBS or chroma key, I mean, oh, sorry, OBS or XSplit to chroma key, and therefore it'll erase the green background and all you'll see is the image that you selected, which is why you want to have a transparent background. So I'll show you what the defaults look like. You got a donation. So there you go. Um, you see it's white text. It's that image. And then you heard the default sound. Let me do that one more time. You got a donation. Okay. Uh, so it could be any MP3 you want, as long as it's about 15 seconds long. Um, you probably want either you can use my daughter's voice there saying you got a donation or you can use like Mario coin sound or something that kind of gets the attention of yourself and the people watching the stream to, to look and see who donated. Uh, so new features that I've got here are the ability to change the tracker font and color and background. Uh, maybe green doesn't work for you. Maybe the image that you selected has a lot of green. And so if you've ever seen people do green screen when you wear green, you're invisible. So you don't you can't do that. So what you want to do is come here, pick a color. Let's say blue. Now the background's blue. That looks like uh, a blue screen blue. And so it should be pretty easy for OBS or XSplit to make that disappear. Now you got a like donation. This. Um, and so one important thing for both the font and the background, if you were to hit cancel, now it becomes black. And the way you fix that is over here, you move this back up to white, pick whatever color you want. And now that's your new color. Uh, when you're done, don't forget to hit persist settings so that it saves this color. Um, and same thing with the font. You can pick any font you want. Um, size 52 is a pretty good font size, but you can pick any size you want. Uh, more than that, it's probably going to go off screen. So you kind of want 52 or less, but not too small. Or you won't be able to read it. But yeah, any font that you want. And then uh, for the color, it's um, any color you want. Uh, let's say I pick this weird green color. So now you got a like donation. That. So those are your settings. Again, hit persist settings when you're done and it'll save those for you. And that'll be what you'll use from now on. Again, I recommend uh, having this either be um, chroma key green or blue screen blue if you want to make it really easy for OBS or XSplit to automatically get rid of that background and then um, just have the image and the um, and the text show up. So that just about covers everything that is brand new in the settings. So we'll go back to past me who's uh, most likely on Windows and we'll show you what to do next. Okay, so here's OBS and here's how you can use the files, the text files that are created by the program. So what you want to do, um, so I've got this um, preview program set up to not have this infinite thing here. I figured that out uh, last time I made the instructions for this. So all you do is you come here under sources and let's pretend that this yellow screen represents a game, right? So a color source, instead of being a yellow color source would be a game source, right? So you're playing a game there. Um, and so you want to show something on top of on top of this, right? So actually, first of all, for the tracker, um, this is a, a window capture. So you go start um, doo -doo 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 -doo, window capture. I'll actually make a new one tracker new just to show you tracker new. So you go here, you go to tracker and you'll see there's the tracker. All right, so I'm not going to make this green screen yet. Let me just show you. 
I'm going to pull the program off the screen just so I can hit the test alert button. Remember that button that I showed you here that will that'll trigger it? Actually, I'll push it here. This should show you. You got a donation. There you go. Oh, yeah, and there's the other one I have set up, right, that I have already green screened. And it goes away, right? So what you'll do is you'll, um, on here, you'll click on filters. You'll add a filter, um, chroma key. It's automatically going to assume green. Now it's gone. And so now every time that someone makes a donation while the program is running, and it's a new donation while it's running, then you just hit test you alert, got a donation. and there you go. Um, one important thing for you to do after you've got this all set up and and and, and all that, the next time you want to run this because you're going to record a streaming session or you're going to record a, a video on demand is you want to start um, Extra Life Donation Tracker, hit the tracker button to make the window pop up. Um, that's uh, this window here and then start OBS. If you don't, it'll it'll try and make this window tracker instead of the other one. I don't know why that happens, but that used to also happen with the other program I used to use before I developed mine. It's just some quirk of the way these programs work. Um, so there, there's that. That's really neat. But what else can you do, right? So you can click here and you do a text um, GDI plus. And um, so I've got top team donors already. Actually, I'll show you what that looks like. So those are the top people, the top five donors to the team. Um, and so um, again, I'm not sure if I've triggered it yet for the teams, but for anything that has to do with the participant, that's where you're under your settings window where you have donors to display. That's that governs how many show up here. Um, so for me, uh, I've only got two donations, so that's the most you'll ever see as I add my stuff here. So you can add, sorry, add one of these and let's do um, uh, Reese, uh, last donor, right? So then you do read from file and you click on browse and then last donation name amount. It was Sean. We hit okay. Do, 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 it's tiny. Um, that's probably not, you probably don't want to grow it like that. You, you probably want to do is go here. Um, and then under font, make it a big font, like 48 or something. Uh, right, and then let's say you're actually looking at the screen, It'll look like that. That's still kind of a bit small. Um, let's see if we can go a little bigger. Uh, 48 is the biggest. Oh, no, I think you can type whatever the heck you want here. So I'm going to type 144. There we go. So there's that may or may not look great on yellow, but you can always change the color, right? So go back here, um, select font. No, oh, no, not font, sorry. Over here, select color. You can pick whatever color you think is gonna work well against yellow. So here we've got a little hot dog thing going on, red on yellow. That's what that would look like. Again, assuming yellow is the game that you're capturing. Um, what else might you wanna do? Well, this works a little bit better when you have a lot of um, people, but let's say scrolling. Uh, so I've only got two donors, so it won't be as cool as if I had like 10, but you know, it's, it's only March. Um, so if we go to last and donations name amounts horizontal, that means they're going to be like this. Whereas if you don't do horizontal, if you do, um, the one right, let's see, last name, donor, right? this one, it's, it goes this way. Uh, and then messages, whether or not they left a message, we both didn't, so that's why it says none. Uh, there we go. This is the one that's like this without a message. But let's say you do horizontal. All right, so now you've got, and let's actually, let's make it really big uh, since I don't have a lot of donors. So that'll force it to actually give you a scrolling effect. Let's go even bigger. I like 144. All right, so here's, um, the thing and you're like, Hey, it's cut off. What the heck? So right click on it filters, scroll, and you want to do a horizontal scroll. You can pick a crazy fast speed. You can go backwards for some reason. You probably don't want to go backwards. Um, and so that'll go like, that's really fast. <laughs> you probably don't want to go that fast. Um, let's bring that to a more reasonable pace. Like you might see on the news. 
So that would look like that. And so if you had a lot of donors, you kind of see them scrolling by. Like I said, you can set that to any number, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, and if they had messages, because um, um, you are able to leave messages on the Extra Life page, they'd be able to show the message. Again, if you wanted to do the message version, that would be um, the one that says message on it. <clears throat> if they don't leave a message, I just have it as none. So there you go. Um, so yeah, and just really quickly, I'll go to the last donor here. Um, not select font. I meant to click on browse. These are all the things you could show. You could show the team captain, the team goal. You can show the number of participants, um, how much you've raised so far, right? So 50 bucks, we have raised 50 bucks. And so you could have total raised, you can have your goal and show the numbers going up on game day or whatever day you happen to have lots of people um, donating to you. Um, again, this is what it would look like. Imagine a game behind the yellow. And that's essentially how you use the program. So um, just to recap, you start it up, um, set your settings. Uh, if you click on persist, persist settings, you should never have to set it up again, even as I continue to release up, updates and upgrades to the program. Um, and then uh, once all your settings are good and you've tested it with the tracker and everything looks good, you just hit run. If there's no errors on the command line screen, um, that would be this screen, which has been going for a little bit now. If there are no errors on there, then you are good to go. And uh, when you're done, you hit stop. And then next time you want to play again, you just start it up, start the tracker, start OBS, hit run and go. And everything is great. And you and you'll be able to have thing, these things change as people donate. So I hope that's uh, useful. And if you have any bugs, feel free to go to the GitHub page and uh, open up an issue. I've already um, solved quite a few in 2019 for other people. So uh, happy uh, streaming. Remember, it's for the kids.